Hi all, in this video we'll be discussing the installation of NC2NS. Um, so the requirement is that you should have installed the VMware uh, application and the software, Fedora software, which is 1.6 GB uh, size. Okay. So a, a requirement is you should have installed these two. You should have downloaded the Fedora software, which is shared with you, and then you should have installed this application. So assuming you've done this step, let's move. So this is the first thing. You should have downloaded the Fedora software, place it in some drive and remember where you have placed it and then install the VirtualBox application. Okay, so assuming you have done this step two, let us move forward. So the first, once you have installed the uh, VM VirtualBox, your screen would look like this. So let me uh, take the screen in my PC. Yes, so this is how the screen would look like initially. So once you have installed uh, virtual VM, uh, VM virtual box, this is, and then when you open it, you will see this. So for you, this uh, machine, which you see here will not be available because you have not installed anything. So you can see just this new, right? So first thing you have to do is we have to go to machine and take new, or you can directly take new here. So we're going to select the new machine. So name and the operating system. So since I've already named Fedora 6, I'll just name Fedora 7. Okay, so you can give any names and then this will be automatically updated and then give next. Now, so <clears throat> this is based on your RAM size. So if you have 8 GB RAM size, you can choose 1024 MB and then you can drag this and keep it in the middle. Okay, like. Okay, so if you have AGB, you can place it in the middle. I'm not placing it in the middle. I'm placing it somewhere below because I don't have AGB RAM size, okay? Yeah, so then click next. Now here, so recommended hard disk is 8 GB. So I don't have 8 GB. Anyway, I'm proceeding it. Uh, now, uh, now we are going to choose a virtual hard disk file. So when you have not chosen, this would be written as empty, okay? So now it is empty. If it is empty, you have to go manually and then browse it. So now here you should have already downloaded this. So I had downloaded the Fedora software and, and I've placed it in program files. So I know where it is. Okay. And inside that I have this. Yeah. Virtual disk. Right. So this is the uh, virtual hard disk file, which we are going to choose. Okay. You can see the size is larger. And now open. This is what is updated here. Okay, fine. So we have shared the zipped version of this with you from our lab. Now create. Now you can see this is created and then it is powered off. Okay. So now I'm going to start. So as, so make sure your uh, Fedora 7 is highlighted, not this, because we're going to change the password and all for this. So make sure the new one is your uh, machine is highlighted and then we are going to start. Okay, you can take this drop down and take normal start and or just directly start from here. Okay, start. So once it starts, just follow the steps. So my PC is a little slow. Yeah, so you will get this. So you will get this in this, you have to choose the second option. So use up and down arrows. See, I'm using up and down arrows. I'm not clicking enter anywhere. So I'm reaching the second option and then pressing directly and pressing E. So E stands for edit, okay? You can see here E for edit. And now here also using up and down arrows, I'm choosing the second option. And then again, I'm pressing E, okay? So you'll get this uh, uh, window where you have to press space and then S and then press enter. Again, you'll get back this in this, you have to again in the second option itself using up and down arrows, come to the second option and then press 
B. Don't press anything else. Just directly press. Don't press enter also. Just directly press B, B, B for boy. B. And then you will get a prompt like this. Okay. So wait for some time. My PC is little slow. Yours might be faster. So you'll get these options faster. So here you have to wait until you get a root. Uh, don't have anything here. If your PC is slow, this will take long time. You will feel you have to type something here. No. So just wait for some time. And then when you get the root uh, location, there you have to press password. Okay. Let us wait. Yes, here. So here is the place where you have to type password. So P-A-S-S-W-D. And then all small letters and then press enter. Now see change password. So changing password for user root. Type the new Unix password. So I'm typing. Okay. It will not be shown. Press enter. Retype the new Unix password. Pressing enter. Sorry, the passwords do not match. Maybe some problem with my keyboard. So let me type once more. Enter. Oh, bad password. It does not contain different, enough different characters. Okay, so I had pressed only five alphabets. So let me uh, try with uh, six alphabets. Oh, again, bad password. Oh, it is based on a dictionary word. Okay. Um, okay. So you will get all these several options. Okay. 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 So you will get, see, I have deliberately done this so that you can uh, get all the options. So this is, see, so if your passwords are not matching, so this is what you'll get. So let me type the password once more. P A S S W. Okay. So yes. So once you type the password, you will get all authentication tokens updated successfully. Okay. And then you have to type init space five, enter. And then wait for some time. So you are going to get a screen like this, NCTUNS, user and other. You have to press the option other, okay? And here the username is going to be root, okay? And the password is the password which you have set, okay? And then you'll get such a window, just press continue. And yes, so you'll get a screen like this. So this is your desktop. Okay. Now, in order to start the NCTUNS, you have to do one more thing. So there, here you can see the terminal. So open this terminal once. And then you can open three different terminals. Okay. So we are going to open three different terminals. First, first second, and So the first one we're going to type dispatcher. 
sorry, this password, okay. And then in the second one, we're going to type coordinator. And then in the third one, as we type the third one, we're going to get the NP2NS client. We're going to get the screen. This one. Okay, so this is the place where we are going to uh, make certain uh, the different experiment topologies and then we're going to analyze the outputs, throughputs, collision drops and so on. Okay, now what is this dispatcher and coordinator? So this dispatcher selects the available si uh, simulation machines which has to be served. So if you move this uh, roller, uh, rulers up, ruler up and down, you can see the minimized version. So this is NCTUNS window which is open, I will minimize this. So you can see this dispatcher, coordinator and NCTUNS client. So the, all these are available here, okay, if you come down. Now, so the dispatcher is used in order to select the available simulation machines which has to be served. So it is uh, used to support the remo remote simulations and the concurrent simulations. So this should be always alive for multiple simulation machines. So while you do the experiments in this window, you shouldn't close uh, this dispatcher terminal window. Same is the case with coordinator. Now what is coordinator? So to let the uh, job, uh, dis uh, job dispatcher know whether currently this machine is busy or running a simulation case or not, this coordinator is required. Okay, so this coordinator, um, so every simulation machine always has a running coordinator. So this is required to communicate with the GUI program, that is this one, okay, GUI, and the job dispatcher, okay. Yeah, now this uh, coordinator notifies the dispatcher if the machine is available or not. So basically it communicates with the job dispatcher and the GUI program, that is this one, okay this one okay so that's the job of coordinator so this coordinator should also be alive when the GUI is run so it's really it relays the information to the GUI program okay so the message exchange between the simulation machine process and the GUI program is basically via this coordinator okay and then we are choosing what is what which is the client what what do we want to open that is NCTNS client Okay, so basically when you run this GUI, when you are designing all the experiments, you have to make sure these three terminal windows, that is dispatcher, coordinator, and this is open. Understood? So you shouldn't close these terminal windows. So now this is open. Okay, you can see DERP. So D stands for draw or design phase or design mode. E is edit mode. R is run mode and P is playback mode. So these are the four modes which will be used. So all these in detail, we will see in the uh, experiment one process. Okay, so this was installation video. So I'm stopping here. Thank you. Any issues in the installation, please get back to us. Thank you.